Okay, if you all look behind me, all of that back there, about four acres, is the property I have to work with over the next five years. This is where I'll be. So a lot of the trees you see around you, well, most all of them will stay. And it's gonna take me a while, obviously. Look, y'all, look at all that behind me. <laughs> it would take a little while to grow my venture big enough that I would need all that. But um, this is gonna serve, if you look down that road there, I will bring in uh, excavator and oh, let me see where my stick there you go and there you go okay and uh widen this and clear it all out so i can move my fifth wheel down there and then i can have my house back there in the woods where i want it otherwise um today i'm out looking to see what my landlady slash friend slash roommate <laughs> has right now as in wildly grown plants that have a demand in the country for which I've already found some spirea we have forsythia I've got a small crop already of common lilac I've got Annabelle hydrangeas so got to get them out here to work with so I'll be spending the next month coming out periodically to take cuttings and um, take the very best ones I can to get them ready for this year to go in the ground to become my future root stock and to go into the plant cutting business that's where I'll start so anyway let's go for a walk this will be the spot that's kind of tricky this is actually a stream that runs through here so all I got to do is get through all of this bumpy stuff I'm not really sure how I'd go about it uh, well, you know, before I start talking off the top of my head, I'll think it through. But this is what I've got. And then all the way down to the back, you see where it starts to curve back into the woods. Um, this would be my playground. So very excited about this. Back from my walk down in the woods. I'm pretty excited about it. You can see my trailer over there, I think. I, I'm right into the sun. So actually, I'm kind of blinded. But my trailer will get moved all the way to the rear. That's the idea on that. But check this out. I'm thinking about starting off my videos with Dave's lilacs or David's flowers. I'm not sure what to call it yet. But if you guys see these right here, if you ever maybe consider doing something like I did, finding someone that will rent you a property that you can park your fifth wheel on, and I happen to choose Maine, well, you might find a property that needs a lot of work like this one. And even in spite of my physical problems, um, I can... I can move, but I can't move for long, <laughs> right? So I got my walker. I sit down on my walker and then rest and get back up. But it's not, you know, not really, really intense. And I'm only using tools like this. That's going to be the idea. So anyway, these are the lilacs behind me. They've been unkept. So if you find someone that will rent you a lot, and then maybe like for me, what happened is I said, hey, you're not doing anything with all of this. Um, how about maybe we work out something, a business deal? Um, okay. And so I told my terms and it was accepted and there we are. So now I basically just inherited a crop of lilacs that I can use. So what I'll be doing is little by little going through here and identifying which are the most healthiest plants to take cuttings from. And then as I begin to learn them, learn more about the plants, I can share it with you. Some of this might be painful filming in the beginning, but I'm just going to try for now. We'll see what comes of it. You see the buds. This is called a terminal bud. Terminal node, I guess is the correct term. And that looks healthy. But you can look right over here, right next to it. And then I start seeing that, well, this doesn't look as healthy. You know, like look at this one. It's got, it does have a terminal node that is green and look like it was leafing out but the rest of the plant just doesn't look healthy remember this is from a, a complete novice so i don't I, I can't tell you that what i'm saying is is 100 percent. but if i'm going to go after something i'm going to look over here first and this is where i what i spied yesterday and i see this and i see this and those are the ones i want first and then that's going to lead me back uh, on this plant all the way back you see how it's leaned over onto the ground 
So I'll work my way back here over the next month. I'll be working through all of this with just these little hand shears for the most part so that I can stop when my back hurts. I don't do too much. That's the idea. Anyway, I'm not sure if I'll publish this. It might be more for historical purposes, but um, here we go. Get to work. So this is my cuttings bucket. What I've decided to do here, here I'll back up and give you a little scale. It's my potato bucket right there. And then this is another cuttings bucket I have over here, Forsythia. So this one is going to be lilac, the common lilac. What I've decided to do is take Pro Mix, then I've ordered some organic peat moss, and then also my Osmocote Plus which will feed uh, smart release plant food will feed these cuttings for up to six months. So the idea would be that we have the peat moss to hold the moisture. We've got a nice top quality soilless mix. Now you'll see I've got my level here of soil. I don't want to put the soil uh, too thick. What I want to do is mimic Mother Nature, and at Mother Nature, we're going to have topsoil is only going to be about four to six inches of topsoil in this part of Maine. That's an estimate, of course, but the idea is you don't want to go putting cuttings that are this deep uh, and then have roots just to take them outside, put them into the topsoil where half of the root is going to be killed off because you're going to be putting it down below your topsoil. You'd put it down below this, which means you're putting it into a material that has no nutritional value and the plant just going to die. So I've estimated that the common lilac, uh, the spacing between the nodes will allow for about four nodes on the plant. This one, for instance, I have one node. If I just fill up here, two, three, sorry, three, and four. That's four nodes. Then if I fill up here, this is one, two, and three. So in this arrangement, you'd have four nodes below, three nodes above. Uh, my research shows that you want 50-50 arrangement nodes below soil to nodes above soil. So you would go one for one, one node below, one node above, or two nodes below, two nodes above. You get the idea, right? Or if you wanted to be really, really conservative and you want to give the plant the best chance at living, you're going to put two nodes below and one node above. And I think that's the way I'm going to go since I have such an abundance of the lilac. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, this is going to go ahead and be stuck. So that's sort of an idea of what it would look like. And then this bucket will go back outside. This is now, we're almost mid-February, the 9th of February today. This bucket will go outside and, and back into the winter. I don't know if this is a mistake. I'm going to tell you that right now. This plant has been in this house for, just call it about 18 to 20 hours. It's also been put in the water. I don't know if that was a mistake. So if I've already started the process of, you know, putting it, putting out its signal that it's spring and then I put it right back out into the winter I could be doing something wrong I don't have enough of these I think for this to be a huge consequence so the ones I do have we're going to experiment with all of the new ones I get they're going to be cut just like this they're going to be stuck into this bucket probably as dense as these you see here all placed outside with their peat moss their food everything they need to go and they will just be forgotten for the rest of the winter all the rest of february and march april ish may ish when it starts to warm up these guys will come alive 
once they come alive we're going to get some roots going and then they will probably remain in this bucket uh, probably until late summer early fall or hmm. all right i had to revise what i was going to say they're going to end up remaining in this bucket for a full 12 months so what i'll be trying with these is they will stay in the bucket they will begin to form roots in about two months after the sun hits them so they're going to go into growth mode i'll monitor the growth mode of course if it's too prolific then i'm going to have to do something about it and repot them out if not they will remain through spring summer fall and winter and the following season um, while they're still dormant i'll break them up repot them or put them in the ground so these are about to go into a home potentially for the next six months to a year we'll see how it goes okay revise this part one two three four okay and action so on the common lilac what i'm going to be doing is a two-thirds approximately below soil one-third above or in this case i'm going to do three to two so we're going to have three nodes below two nodes above so technically you'd want about three and a third uh, for nodes it doesn't work that way in plants obviously so i'm just going to go with three nodes below two nodes above in this example i've cut this one wrong that one has four nodes above but we'll leave that for experimental purposes the rest of these will be three and two so let's get started now in order to make this work what i've done is you might see that the second node which is here is actually sitting right at the soil line and so i don't want that also the bottom of this cutting is sitting flush on the bottom of the bucket and i don't want that either so what i'm going to do is i'll push it all the way down once i feel resistance then i'm going to pull it back up just slightly to get this node out of the soil because i'd imagine if it's just sitting in soil like that it can promote rot is uh, my thinking on it so that's the idea three and two you might notice on this particular cutting what I've done is the outside layer of your cutting right here where it's been debarked. That's the cambrium layer, cambrium layer. I'll put the definition in the link below. It seems to me the uh, research I've done indicates that when the cambrium layer is removed, it begins a process of healing which promotes growth just like in the human body right as soon as we have a cut and the body sends out signals that we need to repair that area same way in plants it appears so i'll also put a link in the description from an authoritative source that you can look up for for yourself also the double whammy on this was if you wanted to promote growth you would remove the cambrium layer and also dip it in rooting compound that would be sort of the double whammy to make sure that you have a better chance at, at growth since i have an abundance of these common lilacs and i'm in the experimental phase i'm learning how this all works what i'm going to do is i'm going to skip the rooting hormone now remember what i said that's experimental and that's on my part however there are some experts that don't even use rooting hormone so uh, it seems to be sort of up in the air of the efficacy of rooting hormone. So this batch will not have it. And up until such time as I make money in my business and decide that that's a good item to add back in because it provides better yield. At this time, I'll stick with just the basics. 
All right, I will take the time and remove that cambrium layer and uh, read the articles for yourself and see what you come up with. I think this is gonna yield um, a higher result for me. So when you finish your cuttings, you might have an area that looks like this and little pieces of what seem to be scrap. Now, if you just think about the utility of plants and the value is what I'm talking about specifically, you would not throw those away. Now, if you think of the aesthetics, you would say, that's junk, throw it in the trash. But I want you to engage your business mind and say those are $5 bills laying there. Suddenly the motivation level changes, I think. What I will do is I will go in there and I will, even though you can't see it, now remember I have these glasses. These are almost a type of jeweler's glasses and they have lights on them. I highly recommend this purchase. Highly, highly recommend it. I can't tell you how much this has motivated me planting seeds and to be able to place each seed exactly where I want it. Uh, it has lights. Uh, takes three AAA batteries. It works beautifully. Five different lenses. Okay, get these. I'll put a link in the description. You'll want to get these. So what I'll do is I will reach down here on the floor and I'll grab one of these and then I'll take my glasses. And what I'll do is I already know that here where the fattest part of the cutting is, I know that this is already a node. And if I can't really see it, I'll feel my way up with my fingers and then I'll feel a node like I do right here. Here's one and the rest of this, there's nothing. So most would say, oh, just pitch it. It has one node up, one node down. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take the cambrium layer here. I'll stick it and this will be the size of my cutting. It will only be what, three inches long. But if this produces a plant, it was well worth it, wasn't it? All right, so everything's done, all potted up. I was able to find two more pieces here on the floor, one node in, one node out, and we'll see if anything comes of it. If so, then, you know, potentially a stock plant, uh, potentially each one of those, a five, $10 bill. I don't know. So anyway, that's it. I thought that was helpful. We'll see how they do.